Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. A common question that we get asked by visitors, especially as they're walking past second deck here, and this is the turret two barbette I'm leaning up against, is, oh, look at these cracks in the armor. Is that battle damage? Um, and the answer is no. End of video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> but um, th this is a real common question we get asked. Is this battle damage? And uh, I've said this a number of times before. You never get a quick and simple answer with me. Uh, the, the short answer is no. There is no visible battle damage on Battleship New Jersey. She very rarely got hit. We've talked about it before in other videos. Uh, and things that hit us did not defeat our armor or, or even leave a noticeable dent. If that's the case, why do you see huge chunks taken out of this armor plate right here? Well, that has to do with how the armor is made. And important to point out, the different Iowa class battleships had their armor made at different steel mills. Uh, and I can't remember off the top of my head which ones had them made where, um, but it tended to be steel mills closer to the shipyard. So Battleship New Jersey is being built in Philadelphia and Bethlehem Steel in Pennsylvania is pretty close. Uh, if, I had, if you put a gun to my head and told me to guess, I would say a lot of our armor came from there. I'm pretty sure Midvale made uh, Missouri's armor. I want to say there were three separate uh, foundries that were making the, the armor for Iowa class battleships. Uh, but I, don't hold me to that. I, I got to go and do some more research and that'll probably be a future video down the line. But the armor is coming from different places. And because of that, if you go and visit, say, Wisconsin and Norfolk versus us here, and you look at our barbat, it might look completely different. The, theirs may have more cracks or be smoother. And that's just how good the, uh, the metallurgy was. It, roughly, rough rule of thumb, the stuff on Iowa and New Jersey looks smoother because a lot of it was made pre-war in 1941. Uh, the armor is a long lead time item. So even before the ship was laid down, they were already making gun barrels and thick armor plate. Um, whereas the war-built ships, or the more war-built ships like Wisconsin and Missouri that came later on, uh, they're, they're getting less skilled metal workers and uh, steel mills that are newer or new to government contracts, so they, they don't quite look as good. Um, rough rule of thumb. Obviously, we've still got these huge scars in our armor plate. Or the, the scarring also depends on the size of the armor plate so, uh, and, and the material. So if the armor is about six inches or smaller, you can roll it out. And rolled armor tends to come out pretty smooth. But if it's thicker than that six inches, usually you have to cast it especially if it's going to be face hardened armor as opposed to homogenous armor or class B armor. So class A face hardened armor tends to uh, be cast more so than class B armor. Now that said, if you look at say this video linked in the description below where we climb down into a, a, a void space to see the armored belt, that looks pretty darn smooth but a curved surface like the conning tower or the barbette tends to have some, some more stuff in it. Uh, and that's because of how these are made. Basically, uh, you're, you've got a bed of sand and you're digging your shape out of the sand. So if that sand is not perfectly smooth or if there's some impurity in the molten class A armor that you're pouring into this uh, sand, then you're going to end up with cracking and stuff like this. Uh, if it's a real simple mold, you might not need that. But with something curved, like the barbette, you, you do tend to uh, get a lot more scarring like this. Turret cracks uh, are pretty famous 
on the internet among people who have gone out and looked at these and then claim that they're vestiges of something. Um, Missouri, pretty specifically, um, people always talk about, oh, her turret was cracked when the ship ran aground and that also damaged the keel and the engines and this and that and the other thing. And um, we just don't have any evidence that that's substantiated. I don't work on Missouri. Never have. Their curatorial department probably has more information on this than I do. But from what I have read, that's not the case. Uh, and it never, these cracks do not impact the effectiveness of the armor plate. But there is, there is a crack in the barbette. Um, and a lot of people attribute it to the grounding. I've heard that as well. It's not from the grounding. So there's a quite a large crack in the barbette. It's still there if you know what you're looking for on the Missouri. It's very hard to spot. In fact, I didn't even see it myself. I had a coworker point it out to me. Um, essentially, Missouri's armored steel was made at a different factory than her three sisters. So her steel's made at Midvale. And the way Midvale goes about their process meant that the steel started to separate um, during the cooling process. Missouri actually has a lot of these cracks in her armor. And during the 1980s, when they were bringing her back, they were inspecting all of these cracks. They are not structural. They don't impact anything. Um, and so this crack in the barbette is from her initial casting phase with that armor. So before she was ever completed and commissioned and put out as a U.S. naval vessel, she had that crack. Um, the grounding didn't affect it, didn't make it worse. It didn't put any stress on the turret, though they did worry it may have because they were wrapping co um, cables around turret three, mm -hmm. but it didn't impact it at all. Um, and in the 80s, um, Landgraf, who if you're a battleship person, you will know that name, he was brought into Long Beach Naval Shipyard and he actually put a marine grade epoxy over the crack, sanded it and made it flush again. So you can see that flat area. It's the only part of the barbette that's flat and not the dimpled from the sand casting. Um, and they did that in some of the ar other armor on the ship as well. The barbette is up to 17 inches thick. Um, because it's curved, it's not all 17 inches thick here at the front. I think it's 11 inches thick on New Jersey and then goes to 17 inches on the side. So having a uh, half inch thick hole here doesn't really impact that. Uh, and likewise, Missouri being the last of the Iowa's in commission, uh, maybe didn't get the best plate out of everyone. So it's got more and deeper of these. And somebody looked at one at some point and tried to justify it as, hey, isn't that from when the ship ran aground? And these rumors have been going around since at least the 1980s because I've read somewhere, and it wasn't a scholarly work, so I'm not entirely sure that's accurate, but I have read uh, from a, a worker at the Long Beach shipyard that they uh, basically filled in the crack with putty to make it look smooth, just to get people to stop saying, oh, that's a damage to the ship, or something like that. Uh, again, can't entirely substantiate that, but uh, it's something that I vaguely remember reading at some point. So one cool feature you can see in the cast armor that hasn't been machined at all, is you get these uh, little line patterns in it. And I believe that's from the uh, damp asbestos cloth that they would have covered this with. You can see the individual fibers outlined in the casting. But it's real cool. You, you can always tell which armor has been cast instead of machined in some way because of those striations. So had you ever heard the story before of Missouri's barbette crack? Let us know the version that you heard in the comment section down below. Uh, it's one of those things that Everyone who tells the story tells it a little bit differently. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. Uh, and you can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.